All right, as you can see here, we have two sets of uh, rational functions, which I've separated down into pieces. I'm decomposing it in order to use it to uh, integrate this big guy easily. However, um, the algebra that happens after this point is quite tedious, and I wanted to show an example of it. Now, in my class, if you're taking my class, I had asked them to finish this one off by multiplying both sides by the common denominator and then collecting all the like terms on this side. And after that, we do some really neat algebra with it. However, I'm not going to do that one for my class. <coughs> I'll show them how to do this by doing this example down here. So this isn't about how to come up with this particular ratio of ax plus b over x squared plus 1, etc. This is what to do after you have the partial fraction decomposition set up. So here we go. What you have to do, and we did this in class, is multiply both sides by the common denominator, which of course is x squared plus 1 times x minus 5. Minus 5. All right, so if I multiply this side by x squared plus 1 times x minus 5, it'll cancel with the denominator, and I'll be left with x, 10x plus 2. On this side, I'll have ax plus b times x minus 5, and let's use our parentheses properly so it works out, plus c times x squared plus 1. Okay. Now what you do is you multiply out everything on this side and you collect like terms. Now like terms, that means combining coefficients of terms that have the same variable and power. So the same x squared, same x, same anything like that, same constant. So that's what I'm going to do. So if here I have 10x plus 2 is equal to, now I have the foil this out. ax times x is ax squared. ax times negative 5 is minus 5ax. b times x is bx. And b times negative 5 is negative 5b. So this is an x squared term, an x term, an x term, a constant term. Notice there's no x in there. Now I'm going to keep going. Plus cx squared plus c. Now, collecting like terms. I'll use different colors here, I guess. So this is an x squared term, and this is an x squared term. So all my x squared terms are going to go right here. So it looks like it's going to be a plus c right here. Now the next one, let's do the x term. So this is an x term. And this is an x term, and I don't see any other x terms over here. So I'm going to say plus minus 5a plus b times x. Notice I can't do anything with those coefficients. Normally, if I knew that a was 2 and c was 3, I'd write 5x squared, but I don't know that. So I have to leave it like this. And then lastly, the constant terms. There's a constant term, and there's a constant term. So that's going to be plus minus 5b plus c. Now I'm kind of paranoid about negative signs just like you are, so that's why I use my parentheses and I put things like that. And this side comes down here. Now I'm going to show you the next step. This is the collecting like term step that we just finished. Now let's see what we do next. So the rule of thumb says that if ax squared plus bx plus c equals dx squared plus ex plus f, what can you say is true? Most people say then a must equal d, b must equal e, and c must equal f, and that's true. If these two guys are the same, the like coefficients have to be the same. It's just a fact of life. So what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to say, okay, whatever the coefficient on the left and the right of the x squared term, they have to be equal. The coefficient for all the x terms on the left and the right, they have to be equal. Same thing with the constants. 
So I know I see 10x here, so that means 10 has to equal minus 5a plus b. x term, x term. So 10 has to equal minus 5a plus b. Then I have a constant term 2. That has to equal my constant term over here. So that's 2 equals minus 5b plus c. But I don't have anything over here on the left for a plus c. So what do you think I do? Well, technically, can't I write 0x squared over here? Isn't that legal? I mean, really? We just don't write it because it's 0, but that's totally true. So that means that 0 is equal to a plus c. Now what I have here is a system of equations, three equations, three variables. And you go ahead and solve it. It's actually not that difficult to solve this particular one. So the quick, quickie here is uh, from here this implies, now notice I'm using an arrow because that's the word implies that uh, a equals minus c. So anywhere up here I see an a, I can write minus c. Okay, so that means that 10 equals minus 5 times minus c plus b. And then uh, that also means that 2 equals minus 5b plus c. Now this is a real straightforward system that you should be able to solve with substitution or elimination. And then once you find b and c, so let's say solve with substitution or elimination, elimination of variables, then sub in, uh, come on, let's write this properly, sub in for a, then you have your partial fraction decomposition, decomposition, oh my goodness, then you're done with partial fraction decomposition. But again, try to take this example, okay, and apply it to the problem that we gave you above and see if you can come up with at least the equation separated into like terms and try to finish it off if you can with this example. Good luck.